I haven't had a chance to try their hardware, so I can't really fairly comment. Uh, but it looks like what they're doing is pretty interesting. I still, you know, I've obviously, I'm biased, but I prefer our hardware and software. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what they end up shipping. We can go a long way. I mean, like you, you tried Oculus Touch. We can track in that whole room, which is a maybe four meter by four meter room. So it's pretty, you, we, and we can go bigger than that room. It's just that's how big all of our demo rooms have been. You know, it's these, these cube, cube rooms. The thing about multiple cameras, it's not about range, it's actually about occlusion. That's the problem you're solving. Uh, if you have one camera, even if it can track you all the way to the side of the room, if I turn away from it, uh, then you can't see the controllers. Or let's say even if there's a controller and I'm facing towards it and I pull back on a slingshot, I can only see this hand, it cannot see this hand. So by taking two cameras and put, separating them apart by a few feet, you're able to make it so that one camera can always see the controller. That's really the most important part. It's not about ha having more range from cameras, it's about having less occlusion. Right now we're targeted just people having one camera. The Rift comes with one camera and that covers a pretty large space and uh, that's, that's what we're selling right now. I think you're going to see a wide range of games, so all the way from those tiny indie games that just do one concept really well, all the way to AAA games. I mean, we're showing off things, we're showing off uh, some of the games here at Gamescom are things like uh, Damage Core from High Voltage and Edge of Nowhere by Insomniac. These are major developers that are putting big resources into developing these VR games. So, um, you know, it, maybe they wouldn't fit the definition of AAA in terms of, you know, being made to the scale and scope of games that are able to target you know, many hundred, you know, a hundred million Xbox 360s out there, but uh, they're, I think you're going to see a wide range of games, all the way from indie, all the way to very high budget, high production value VR games. No, you, I mean, you could make these open world games. The biggest issue isn't even making them in VR. It's just that open world games like Grand Theft Auto are very, very expensive, and they have to make back their budget over many different users. That's why they launched on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 and Xbox One and PS4 and PC. It's because that's the only way they can make back all of their money. There's just not going to be as many users in virtual reality for the next few years as there are in the console market. So that's the biggest reason you won't see huge games like GTA made just for VR. I mean, I'm all interested in AR and VR, but I agree that augmented reality is very difficult technology to get right, especially because we don't really know how to use it. Uh, virtual reality, it's very obvious. You know, you, putting someone inside of a video game is something people have wanted to do for a long time. With augmented reality, how do you make a good game that relies on changing the world around you? Nobody really knows how to do that yet. And there's people starting to experiment, but AR seems to be more useful for things like uh, you know, showing where you're driving or showing, you know, where, where you're walking or augmenting things with information. It doesn't seem to be as useful for gaming yet. We've been working on a lot of stuff around that, like some of the acquisitions we've made with computer vision companies like 13th Labs, Nimble VR, Surreal Vision, and a few others. Um, the goal is to build optical technology that can capture the real world around you and bring parts of it into VR seamlessly. Uh, but we haven't shown anything, anything around that yet. Maybe, but I, I actually don't think that gloves are necessarily the right path right now. Uh, because one of the things you get with Oculus Touch is you get uh, not just tracking your fingers and where your hands are, but you also get an analog stick and buttons and triggers, which you want to have for a lot of games. Because you don't just want to be able to you know, pinch things and poke things. You want to be able to pick up a gun and then shoot it with a trigger or be able to feel like you're holding a sword. And you can't do that with just, with just gloves. You need something more substantial and physical. And if you really want to have the ability to track your hands, that's going to be optical technology, not gloves. We're going to be able to do that with uh, depth cameras looking at hands and reconstructing them in 3D. I don't think that there's going to be necessarily a change. I think that even in 10 years, we're still going to have controllers like Touch. And looking at other more, like games like racing sim games, the best controller for racing sim games won't be gloves and it won't be touch, it's going to be actual steering wheels. For flight sims, it's going to be you know, having a throttle and stick. I think that in 10 years, we're gonna see a much wider range of different optimal solutions for virtual reality input, but I don't think that we're all going to change to any just one type for all games, because 
no one one device could ever be optimal for all games and all uses. It could, but I think that's a short-term improvement. I mean, if you look at arcades, one of the reasons that they declined was because it used to be you could get an experience at arcades that was much better than what anyone could afford at home. But then game consoles became po more powerful and people stopped going to arcades because they could get better experiences at home. And while I think for the next few years there will be some room for arcades to do better you know, with VR, to, while everyone doesn't have VR technology, uh, just look 10 years in the future and I think that everyone is going to have VR headsets or AR headsets that they either wear all of the time or they wear lots of the time. I don't think there will be room for arcades to get people to spend extra money. It would be like if you had an arcade where you, you had mobile games or something. There, that could have been interesting to have 10 years ago, but today everyone has a phone so there's, there's no reason to go to a special place just to use technology that you already own for the most part. If that's really true, if that's really what people... Uh, first of all, I don't think that's going to be true. I don't think that the majority of people are going to do it. It'll be a lot of enthusiasts and a lot of very hardcore gamers will do it, but I don't think your average person will. If they do decide to do that, though, I think people will make space to do that. I mean, like, look at the modern living room. The modern living room is built around a couch and a television, and basically the whole living room is built around watching television and if VR really becomes that popular that everyone wants to use it in a room I think it's much more likely that people will adapt spaces in their house to use it than want to drive to an arcade every time they want to use virtual reality because history has shown things consumer electronics only take off on a mass scale if you can use them at home on your own time they don't take off if you have to go somewhere special to use them it's the same for cell phones for TVs for game consoles none of them are able to reach mass market as as something, as something that you have to go and do. Oh, yeah, I definitely agree. But not necessarily in the sense of Gear VR where you plug you know, a phone into it, but it's really about the mobile processing power. So what's going to make virtual reality mainstream in a huge way is when you don't need to have it plugged into a large PC. When you can just have a set of glasses or goggles that you put on and they have all of the GPU and CPU and memory and everything on the headset itself. That's going to allow people to use virtual reality and augmented reality anywhere without any tethers. And I think that's, that's going to help it achieve really mainstream adoption in the next five or ten years. The chips are always getting cheaper, they're always getting better. There's also different trade-offs between how you design a chip for a mobile phone and how you design it for a VR headset. Uh, for example, on a mobile phone, it's very important to have it be very, very thin and not have a lot of, you know, no heat sink, no fan, and to have very long battery life so that you can use it all day long. Whereas for VR goggles, you want to optimize a chip to have absolute maximum graphical power, even if it means you, know, you have to have a small fan or a, graph, you know, a heat sink on it. That's what that's what's going to happen in five or ten years. I think most VR headsets will have built-in will have built-in rendering horsepower on board. You'll still be able to probably either stream graphics from a PC or plug it into a PC for you know those for the highest quality possible graphics. But in ten years, you'll be able to get graphics on a just rendered on a headset that are far beyond what we have even on a PC today.